Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to part 7, probably, of my Let's Play of Dark Souls 3. Yesterday we left off at the Crucifix Forest, and from that point on, we carry on. We'll talk to Henri for a bit, and then, of course, after we rest at the bonfire, they will go on their way. And I'll go on my way. Henri is kind of like us. It's kind of like the player from Dark Souls 1, actually. She's even wearing the same armor and everything. And she is a noble and a good undead. Seeking justice and, uh, you know, seeking whatever justice actually in this world that is because really there is no good or bad in Dark Souls 3 it's just a grey picture like you can feel like you're doing a good deed but not really you can feel like you're being a mean person but not really and all of that is convoluted just like space and time are convoluted uh, see, this is a bad idea that I just did. I kind of forgot myself for a bit. I also kind of forgot that I did not rest at the bonfire for some reason. I thought I did rest at the bonfire because I did not see Henri. But I think me reloading the game resulted on her being moved. It's one of the other reasons, or one of the other ways to make someone move from a location or advance uh, an NPC's storyline. So yeah, I understand. Anyway, now that we have our Estes back, we can proceed. But we have to kill them first. Not a problem with my trusty sword and trusty yeah, it's about the same. Two-handing in Dark Souls 3 isn't as powerful as two-handing in Dark Souls 1, for example. So, it has its benefits. But, it's not as good as... Oh, both of them? No, just one. Alright. This time I did kind of correct. Ow. Ow. There you go. Goodbye. Have a backstab. In the back. There's one more. Hey, yes. <clears throat> one is alright. More than one. Problematic. I've talked about this forest a bit uh, in my last episode. And the fact that I really like it. It's a great place. But. But. There's only one enemy that I despise here, and that's the crabs. <sighs> I really hate those. Let's, uh... Do this. And do it again. I kinda actually forgot that dogs are extremely vulnerable to fire attacks. Now I do remember why I had a fire weapon in my first playthrough. <laughs> because uh, many enemies do or are a lot vulnerable to fire attacks. So how do I tackle this place generally? Well, I first start by going to the right because there isn't that much things to do to the right. There is, there is a path I can take but, and I will find an armor, I find a very tough enemy compared to my current level. I don't know if I can take it or not, but I sure will try. And then, I will go to the left. And I will go to the left because there is a bonfire to the left that I need to kindle. Oh no, not kindle, to activate and rest up there, which will be my checkpoint. So to the left... You have the Crystal Lizard, or the Crystal Sage, not Crystal Lizard. 
uh, the Crystal Sage and the path to the Beacons of the Deep. To my right-ish, I will have the path to the Farrens of the Deep or the, to the Watchers of the Abyss and to the Farren Keep. So, on my first ever playthrough, I actually went to the Farren Keep, which, despite not being a wrong choice, because both regions, the Deacons of the Deep and the Farren, or the Watchers of the Abyss, are both kind of equal in level, so you will not feel such a big difference in between. Um, the fact that going that way kinda made me miss a quest or two. Uh, I'm talking about Grey Riot's quest and Siegbert's quest. This guy is a kind of a tough guy. If you let him go ham on you, he will destroy you. And he has Excuse me, I keep clearing my throat because allergies. Uh, he has multiple attacks, multiple attack animations, and little time between one attack and the other. So you gotta really time your attacks and not let him go ham. He's got his grab animation, which is good because the recovery after it is uh, really good enough. You gotta watch an eye, keep an eye on your endurance and not let it deplete completely. So, talking about endurance and stats in general, you see I've started leveling up kinda. As you can see my dexterity is 26 already and you ask me what stats am I gonna prioritize? Well, despite me telling you what stats I will be prioritizing, I've still taken the liberty to take a few points in dexterity first, because this build is focused mainly on dexterity. So many weapons are going to be relying a lot on dexterity. So to get that first and aside, I maxed, or I maxed, I leveled up my dexterity a little. This way, I will have enough dexterity to wield whatever weapon that comes my way. Now, if you ask me what's the number one stat a new De Dark Souls player, I was going to dexter say dexterity player, a new Dark Souls player maxes is undoubtedly, undoubtedly, uh, how do I, uh, no, oh yes, they're like this. Explanation. There you go. So, is undoubtedly endurance. Endurance is an attribute governing stamina. Also governs resistance to lightning and bleeding. And by stamina, I mean that green bar that you use basically when you are doing anything in the game. So, Aside from boosting your resistance, stamina boosts how much time. Oh, really? Where's my weapon? <laughs> how much time you can spend attacking? How much time you can spend blocking? How much time you can dodge? And everything. All these are used. Or use stamina. If your stamina depletes, you're as good as dead. Even your HP does not matter compared to stamina. Like you can leave your vigor for later, but endurance is the one thing you need to focus on the most. You can put some points later on whatever attribute you are maxing. Uh, you know, you might need some points to gain a certain type of weapon or anything, but keep in mind that Dark Souls is a dance. Literally, kind of, in a sense of the world, where you are always tumbling. Especially for you, those of you who do not know how to time their attacks correctly, or do not know how to dodge stuff or parry stuff correctly. So endurance, endurance, and more endurance. Once you have that, 
the game is actually going to be a bit easier. The other stats comes later. And actually, I do not go for Vigor right away. I go for Dexterity or Strength, depending on the build, or Faith, or Luck, or Intelligence. Uh, but after that, then I would go for Vigor. Because if you take damage, that means you're doing something wrong. If you don't take damage, then you're doing something right. And here we find the lovely, lovely Saleswood armor or Saleswood set. It's a quietly, quite nice armor. I kind of like it. And uh, because I like it and it falls greatly, I will take it. I will wear it. Where's the Saleswood helm? No, not helm, gloves. Saleswood trousers and although this is the best of course so I'm gonna keep it I think the helm or this helm is one of the best looking helms in the game and it's really great and now you have it an amazing looking amazing looking armor now the armor isn't here just for being an armor and the treasure you can find it also gives you access to this drop point and you can go to the right for something very important and to the left you will actually be dropping behind the Dark Knight. Now this enemy in particular for those of you who did not play Dark Souls 1 is reminiscent of Dark Souls 1 and is prominent in Dark Souls 1. This is actually the first kinda toughest enemy you will face or you'll face in Dark Souls 1. You'll find it down the stairs, guarding, <laughs> coincidentally, this ring, the Blue Tear Stone Ring, and it's a tough fight. Let's see if I can drop in without averting his attention. Now, since I am not confident in my skills of taking him down, I'm gonna take this object first, and then we'll go my way. Now, if I do the big leap, I go to the left and I do the entire area first, I will end up behind this iron door, actually, yeah, to the stairs and everything. So that is a vantage point showing us this. So you know that you are missing something, that there is something you did not take, which is great. It's always one of the best things about Dark Souls in general, the level design. Now, hopefully he will not one-shot me or kill me. So I don't want to lose my uh, kindling or my sunder. But the problem is that he, he, uh, he is a bit above, so I don't think I can backstab him. Oh, there you go. Already already now aside from his old animations like this one for example he does have new ones which are problematic so the old ones I can dodge no problem I can even do this but the new ones kind of take me by surprise and can actually kill me Please note that if you have, or if you are going for a luck build, or if you're a thief or whatever class that relies on luck, you'll actually be able to drop his armor, and his shield, and his weapon, I think. Saleswood Twin Blades. So, it's good. Like, you can farm him. He's a, I think he respawns. I'm not certain, but I think he respawns, which will allow us to... Kill him multiple times and eventually farm his sets. Let me use these for a bit. And see if I can do some damage. Just like I said about the uh, iron door earlier. This is another interest point. So you see a sleeping giant lizard. You see a big glowy treasure. Of course, you try to open the door and it doesn't open, which is just something that will tell you that you should probably 
know that there is a way that you probably need to find where this connects and it is actually a bit farther it's actually really farther down the line so yeah um it does this and this oh yes one of the tricks in this place is equipping something with this kind of a, uh, animation because although this is a small place um, once you get through here it becomes a problem I see you as you can see I cannot run but I can do this let me try something see how much damage you take from fire attacks not that much huh not that much This is a problematic enemy that I do not want to deal with. I can kill him, undoubtedly. But I will leave him be. Oh man, that's attack. Let me heal before I die. I just want to take this. Thank you. Just want to heal. And you know what? Let's deal with you. Let's show you why these are problematic enemies. I should probably switch uh, to a much better weapon because that dagger do not do anything. Now this is more like it. But I still take damage because I did not take my stamina into account. There you go, grab attack. It feels like I'm fighting a mini boss or something. Please do not kill me, thank you. This is a messy, messy fight. Thank you for doing this. Because this is your undoing. The Great Swamp Ring. Uh, this is a pyromancy ring, which is really great. I guess I kind of forgot about that. But now, we do have a Great Swamp Ring, which boosts pyromancy. Could be handy once I need to deal with something in range with my pyromancies I'd probably switch to it perhaps once you reach the kind of darker place of the water you are slowed down you cannot run and your jump is automatically gonna become a fat roll jump it's like you are overweight, but you're not really overweight, it's just like that. And in this place, really, it's uh, not a big deal. But in a later section, where like 90% of the place is... Ah, uh, damn, I hate this crap. Is gonna be a swamp, uh, it's gonna become a big problem that's one of the places that I really hate about uh, about the game in general just like I have good places I like you know what let's uh, let's not attack you let's not attack you you are a problem. I will just go back to the bonfire. Get my Estus charges back. And then come back here. This way, or this time, I will go to the left. And to the left, there's going to be a really nice... No, not to the left. Uh, to the right. 
to the direction of the Farron Keep. There's going to be an extremely, extremely amazing armor that I would make certain I would take. Uh, it's one of my favorite armors in the game. And it kind of looks like... Um, maybe it's just me, of course. But it kind of looks like Kylo Ren's outfit from Star Wars. And it's something that I really love. And, you know, the plug color in general is one of my favorite colors. So, all in all, a great armor that I should not miss. I will see you later. I'll take this guy on first. Oh, you died. Oh, that's a bummer. Sucks for you. Hate the invulnerability frames that they get once they are getting up which surprisingly is not present in Bloodborne I think you can kick someone when he's down there's a drop attack the problem is if I do the drop down attack I risk aggroing the dog and two of these which is not good for me do not be greedy with my attacks because if I attacked him a third time I would have taken a free hit from this fella so yeah that was gonna be there should be an invasion here and I'm killed there should really be an invasion Missed that one. There you go. My synchronized attack, which will enable me to kill both of you. As there's something I need to talk about. I'm not taking this um, shield because I like it or something. I take this shield as well as any shield with a hundred percent physical resistance, as you can see has 100 physical 55 or 51 magic and everything so um, and a good stability in general so this shield is really good to block attacks completely I will not take damage once I block with this shield which is really good you should take that in advance Ooh, that was close that was even closer and I forgot to switch my weapon Ow. What attacked me? Was it the crab? Ah, oh, thank you. You're taking damage for your body here. Trust me, buddy. I'll use whatever means in my possession to cheese a fight. Because that's the trick in Dark Souls. That's something I did not do before. I always relied just on my sword and my shield to take down enemies. And I often finished Dark Souls, whether it's the one or two or three, um, without using items that were given to me just to take situations easier. I think the only thing that I did use a bit was the green blossom which increases my stamina region as the armor and the green crest my buddy my comrade and my long time friend the green crest shield I'll get to that in an instant as I get my ass handed to me by the big daddy crab oh yes Go away, leave me be. I swear to god there's gonna be, or there should be, an invasion here. Interesting. I am... I am cindered, I am kindled, I am human and everything. You're like, I am ab I'm compatible with being invaded, so I do not understand why. Did not get to the invasion. Maybe I did something wrong before, or I came here too early. But 
I don't know. There's two of you. Oh, that's problematic. I'm just running away. Nope. Um, nope, nope, and nope. The Twin Dragon. Alright. This is a relatively safe place. So. My dear Grass Crest Shield. Old, medium, metal shield of unknown origin. The Grass Crest is lightly imbued with magic, which slightly speeds stamina recovery. Skill parry. But the most important aspect in the shield is the stamina recovery. You see, I think I 100% played with this shield on my first, on my second, not first, on my second play of Dark Souls. And even in my first play, when I found it, I kept playing with it because I thought it was a cool shield. A second time I knew how important the shield is, and the fact that it gives us more stamina recovery, and as I talked to you before, stamina is the most important stat in Dark Souls games in general, even in Bloodborne. Thus, making this shield my best friend for the entirety of Dark Souls 1. In Dark Souls 1, there's no Chloranthial ring. Only the the shield is one of the only ways of uh, boosting your stamina, so yeah. And most often than not, that shield was like this on my back, because two-handing on in Dark Souls One is really amazing, and because I use I was using the Zwei Hander or the Zwei Hander, whatever you want to call it. Um, of course, I two-handed it, and. I did not. Ow. I did not use the shield that much. I've never been a shield guy, to be honest. I rarely use it. I always would much rather dodge by doing this than just guard with the shield. Because, I don't know. Like I said, I've never been a tank really. Uh, most of my characters in any other game are dexterity based characters. And I've often went to dexterity based characters. And Dark Souls is no, <laughs> it's no exception. But yeah, sometimes it's good to have a shield. Actually, some boss fights are even easier. That's a trap by the way. But if you look closely, there's the bonfire. So, before doing that, I'll go kindle the bonfire first, then I'll take the items. Should I die? And I shouldn't. Oh crap. Almost. Almost got poisoned. These guys are harmless, generally, but... But, if you let them... It's funny, I fell for the obvious trap, and I almost died because of that. This is the most deadly combination ever. When you get two enemies attacking, simu not simultaneously, attacking one after the other, thus uh, giving you either no window to repost, or to attack, that's one of the deadliest things in Dark Souls in general. So you always need to manipulate your enemies in a way where you are in advantage and you are not being attacked like that. And I was like, oh, that's a trap. I should probably deal with the big toothpick guy first and then kill the dog while the dog is like reacting to me. I was way wrong. I think the right thing to do uh, was fireball the dog with my pyromancy and then while he's you know having a fit on the ground kill the toothpick fella. Oh this is a particularly tough enemy. This guy 
I do not recommend when you first arrive here. If by chance, like me, you are cindered, do not summon this fella. This guy is destruction. He has the flambeard sword and a round shield and he's a mad phantom. A mad phantom, uh, for an NPC he's gonna 100% attack you, but a mad phantom on PvP is someone who is gonna be able to either help you or kill you. It's kind of a mix between a white and a red phantom. So you get the ability of helping people and being a good guy in general and oh yes like I said before you let this guy do his thing and he will destroy you goodbye and or kill them and that creates so much uh, gameplay into the PvP where you see so many people having this mad phantoms help them and then waiting for the opportunity to kill them it's an amazing system to be honest I really like it there's gonna be another guy of these there he is should two-handed for the initial attacks Wait for mass timing to get back and then deal with it. I think he gets damaged by the fire. Oh yes, he does get damaged by the fire. And so do these fellas who kind of dodge the fire. Sometimes. Come take a shower in the fire. There you go. <laughs> idiot. I can't blame them, these are undead. They are a bit stupid. There you go. Cook in the fire. A titanite shard, always amazing. Come at me. Come. Like I said, any mechanic that helps me win a fight is something that I will always use. Come on. It's only a fire, okay? It's nothing. Let me cool you off with my Aerithiel sword. Fire and ice. Goodbye. Since I know how much hits it takes, or it takes, or oh, Esther's shard, to kill... Uh, there is another path I can go from there and drop down here. Kind of gives me an advantage to the guy sitting by the fire here. Because since I came that way, or the normal way, Salter, um, he automatically spotted me and attacked me. And by the way, I will be equipping that armor that I found soon. I just want to play a little with this sales with armor. One of the armors I did not wear that much. I played the most of the game with the black armor with the Black Knight armor, I think its name is. And so did many of you. It's a very, very popular armor. As I almost died by Mr. Crab. Okay, it kinda makes me wanna eat some <laughs> crab. Something I haven't done in ages. Ages, ages. Anyway. Since we are next to the bonfire, and since I am way past my I should stop the episode time, uh, well, we'll do it right here. On my next episode, I will be undoubtedly going to the Crystal Sage first, and to the be Deacons of the Deep first. That's because I do not want to miss the quests of Siegvert, and Patches, and Grey Rat three most or of the most important characters for me are going to be having their quest advanced first in the Deacons of the Deep and then the Farron 
The fan is really all the, the other important place for me because that's where I will find the wolf sword, which is one of the key components or the key uh, elements for this build I'm going for. It's going to be tough to uh, get in the covenant and deepen it, but I will take it. I will do it. It's no problem. That will be a chance for me to level up and everything. That said, I will leave you guys with this note. I hope you have been, I hope you're having a great day and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.